Michael Chandler back in the program down in uh, well, he's down in the land of the big mosquito down in Florida right now. Yeah, um, where the yeah where the mosquitoes are. So all over. A buddy of mine, uh, Jimmy Jones, is out. He's a he's like a gator, you know, snake hustler wrestler down there, and nice. he had a long sleeve shirt on, full full mask, full hat, goggles. Was out in the freaking out in the middle of the bayou yesterday, and uh, or the swamp rather, I guess over there. He went in the swamp yesterday. And was doing, I don't know what he was doing, because I, like, I catch his, his uh, Facebook feeds, but I don't, like, read all of it. And he yeah. shows his arm, and he's got, like, he is just covered in mosquito bites. And he had a long sleeve shirt on and gloves. So the mosquitoes got inside his crap and bit him up. And he's like, dude, it's the worst. I'm surprised he's not sick, because he has so yeah. many bites on his arm. That's just one arm. Like, I imagine what the rest of his body looks like. How do you deal with it down there, especially... You know, I mean, you you like, I mean, you, you understand about bugs. I mean, that's like you were you were raised someplace where there's no animals like that. But that it's crazy. Like you go outside, you're bit. Yeah, I mean, I tell you what, I I would, I mean, I'll walk around in the woods and kick, you know, snakes and other big wildlife and all that kind of stuff. Like those things don't really bother me. But the worst is mosquitoes. I mean, I actually we had a couple in our house the other day. Like it's you accidentally leave the door open for. 10 seconds and one flies in and you're sitting there watching TV and you hear this, you know, and you're like, Oh shoot. And then you can't catch them. You know, if you, unless they land on you, you know, and they're about to bite you, you can kill them. But it's uh mosquitoes and little bugs are one thing that'll really get you like that show naked and afraid. I could, I could handle everything. But if I'm, if I'm in one of those nasty little stagnant water areas where the bugs just won't let you sleep, make you go crazy real quick. Yeah. Yeah. No matter how much fire you got going on, how much, how much bug spray you have going on. It doesn't work, but yeah. for you, so you're basically going from the apartment to the gym, getting your workouts in and coming back in and doing grocery store and I'm assuming some rehab stuff, but that's, you're really not outside that much right now, are you? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's a very, uh, mundane life. It's, it's groundhog's day every single day. You know, it's, uh, pretty much eating the same food. It's same workouts and same everything really, you know, not a lot of, you know, there's, this isn't a very glamorous life, you know, you're just here and you're. You're training, and you're getting after it, and you're focusing on your rehab, your prehab, your supplementation, your sleep, and and your workouts. Recovering, you know, everything after each workout, it focuses on recovery for the next workout. So you just uh, kind of live a life of mundaneness, if you will. But it's it's training camp, and it's uh it's my job. It's almost a monk. You're almost living like a monk at this point because it's the same food, <laughs> the same. It's it's literally down to the food. It's the same stuff, except the only fact is you're not making any beer or making any wine. I mean, other than that, yeah. So, exactly. So I, I got to ask, it's Wednesday for the folks at home. We're doing this interview and I hit up Mike and Mike's like, yeah, we can do it today. Like no problem. And so you're free for the most of the part of this, of this for you, you're six hours ahead of me. Cause I'm still in Hawaii, but you've been free yeah. pretty much the whole, the whole afternoon and evening is Wednesday. your half day. We just work out in the morning and you're done. Uh, yeah. Throughout, throughout training camp, Wednesday has been my half day, but really this, you know, this week I did a two a day on Monday. Um, uh, and then I, I only had one workout yesterday. I have one workout today. Um, I'll have one workout Thursday, one, th- one Thursday, one Friday. I mean, at this point, all the haze in the barn. I mean, I'm already in shape. I'm not going to get in any better shape. At this point, it's just about keeping that confidence high, going through your dress rehearsals, working on your, you know, your techniques, keeping everything sharp, keeping everything light. You know, I mean, I mean, there was times where I would spend two hours in the gym. Um, maybe sometimes more than two hours in the gym, some of these times as far as per practice. But I mean, these last, this last week before I head to New York, I'm trying to get in and out of the gym, you know, warm up, work out for 45 minutes and then get out. You know, I mean, it's not about quantity anymore. You know, it's about quick quality workouts. Um, and, uh, that's kind of where I'm at. So this, yeah, this Wednesday, it's a nice little half day for us. Did a little bit of, um, shopping grocery shopping it's always the same thing going to whole foods and it's pretty much the exact same thing every single day so there um uh so obviously you know with with 10 days ago before the fight actually happens nine days out your weights your weights got to be pretty low how good is it right now it's good yeah i was 12 over after practice today um uh, which is really close i, I don't want to get any closer than that um until i actually get to fight week um and, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's been a, I came into camp extremely lean. I came into camp probably at 7% body fat. Last I got checked, checked, I was somewhere around five. Um, so I, I expect to lose a little bit more. Um, and then all the rest is just water weight, you know? So, um, I think I've just, 
I don't know. I really have just focused a lot more. I think I turned a corner where I got something just kind of clicked where I was just like, not that I ever lived a uh, unhealthy lifestyle um, or not that I, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I focused a lot more on nutrition between training camps. I focused a lot more on um, workouts and just supplementation. And, and, you know, I mean, I got after it a lot between training camps. I mean, I didn't really have much downtime at all, at all, you know, so I was, I was pretty much training. I've been training over the last seven months for this fight, really, you know? Um, and I think, I think I was expecting to fight in March, you know, and Bellator told me I was probably going to fight March or April. And then all of a sudden it was May and then all of a sudden it's June. So I was kind of like in shape, in shape, ready to go into camp for March, um, to fight in March and then fight in April and then fight in May. So really it just kind of was a prolonged, um, kind of 25 week training camp, pre training camp leading up to this training camp. So I came into training camp, extremely lean, extremely focused and extremely on point. So like my first day of sparring, you know how it is. The first day of sparring, you kind of come back. You feel sluggish. You feel off. Distance is off. The timing is off. The reaction time is off. I felt like a, a million bucks my first day of sparring, you know, because I hadn't been working so hard between training camps and and uh, in San Diego and doing all that stuff. So it's been a, it's been a good process, you know. And I've stayed healthy and I've stayed extremely lean and uh, weight is on point. I know that when you used to be when you would go to Florida before, you would have a meal prep service coming to make all your meals, but you said you went to Whole Foods. Earlier today, you're not using meal prep anymore, or just part of time. I am. I am. I'm still doing uh, Jay William Culinary is who I've had the same guy for the last four years doing my meals. Um, but he's, I only get my meals from him, so I still need eggs and avocado and toast for breakfast, and like some. I like to have a uh, nice, you know, those big plastic tubs of greens. I think it's baby spinach and arugula we have, and then like a nice light dressing for between meals or throw some greens in with breakfast, you know? So, so basically my breakfast, my snacks, um, protein shake, protein shake ingredients, bananas, almonds. Um, I have my diametized protein and all those supplements, but I need my bananas, my berries, some greens for protein shakes. So, um, even though I have all my main meals, my big meals, my, my lunches, my dinners, um, meal prepped and, and vacuum sealed containers ready for me to just throw on, on a, um, on the, stove and make i still need you know my breakfasts my snacks and, and just kind of anything else i need are you um uh, uh are you keeping under a certain caloric amount or because you're already getting your meals prepped you kind of know are you are you sitting there going okay today i gotta be under 1900 calories all day like i know that's my number and do you know and are you sticking underneath that or are you just like okay i know that i'm gonna be below my caloric intake and keep my weight right because of the way that i'm eating because the, the, the way the meals are pre-prepped and i know i'm only gonna have these different things throughout the day yeah, I mean that's a cool thing about – so Jay at Jay Willen Culinary is a guy um, who I get my meals through. And, and we, have a, we have a phone call, um, whether it's a video conference or a phone call where it's like, hey, we're going we're gonna to set everything up. You know, the meals, are, the meals are usually between 500 and 750 to 1,000 – 500 to 750 calories um, per meal basically. And I know I'm going to eat you know, three of them a day and then I'm going to have my breakfast – to start with, I'm going to have a snack and I'm going to have protein shakes and that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, for the meals, I pretty much always know that I'm going to be burning more calories than I'm taking in. You know, I mean, you know how it is. I mean, the, you almost can't eat enough uh, whenever you're training because you're training so hard twice a day. You know, yeah. adjust that. You almost can't eat enough if you're eating right when you're in training camp. Well, if you're too, eating I fried mean. chicken and, and I saw I saw a photo of a, of a fighter like a half hour. Robert Fallis. Robert Fallis actually posted a photo of a fighter just literally half hour before. It wasn't his fighter. It was, it was just a guy in the, in the room. He was eating uh, uh, chicken and ribs a half hour before his fight and then fought, yeah. like, fought like garbage. But you're like, oh, wow, like, I, never, I didn't even think that was an opportunity. I didn't even think like, fighters still thought that way. You can actually get away with that and be okay. And I was like, well, if that's the way he eats a half hour before a fight, what's he doing during training camp? Okay, well, now I understand why he's a heavyweight. Now I get why he, he, he seems to be getting bigger but not much more muscular, where a lot of these other guys are getting – Bigger on the scale, but they're getting physique-wise, the, the, the look check, they look like they're getting in better shape. And it seems like with you, you always kind of look the same. Whether you're more muscular or quicker or better shape or worse shape or less muscular, your body type always tends to be the same. So it's tough for me from home, and I'm sure it is for the fans, to go, oh, Mike's in great shape or Mike's in bad shape or Mike's got this or Mike's – you can't really tell because your, your, your morph is the same every single time. Um, yeah. Do you find it getting harder? You said you, you you dialed in a lot more on your nutrition between between um, this last fight and this one. Do you find it you were doing that because it's harder to keep your weight down? It's been more difficult for you to eat 
to to be off the wagon, so to speak, in between camps? You know, are you finding it more difficult to keep your weight down? No, I'm not actually. I mean, I, I you know, I, I am a hundred percent convinced that I am in the best shape that I have ever been in, as far as these last this last year. I mean, I think I really finally have grown into my body. I finally, you know, I'm, I'm a veteran of the sport. So my mind is where it needs to be, but my body has, my body has gotten so much better, faster, stronger. I mean, I'm, I'm the fastest and most, the strongest and most explosive I've ever been. I mean, I'm the best athlete I've ever been. And I think really, you know, it really is me finally scratching the surface of my potential and coming into my prime. And I will say, you know, you and I trained, but five, six years ago at, at extreme couture. And I, and I look back at those I look back at those pictures and I remember people being like, oh man, Chandler's ripped or Chandler, Chandler looks great. He looks in shape. But I look at those pictures and I'm like, man, I am not even close to back then where I am now. And I think I've really just taken a lot of ownership, extreme ownership of my, of my body. And I realized that because you can get away with it. We train so hard that you can, you can get away with cutting corners. You know, I never, I never did. I know guy. I know a lot of guys do. Um, but I've, I've very much stayed pretty even keel when I'm in training camp, I'm focused and I'm eating right and I'm sleeping right. Obviously outside of training camp, you do want to fall off the wagons cause you want to feel like a normal human being. I mean, right now over the last eight weeks, you kind of feel like a robot, you know, it's the same walls and it's the same drive to the gym and the same drive back and the same supplements and the same food and the same everything. You feel like, you feel like you're just on a conveyor belt going through this two month process. So between fights, of course you want to go on vacation or you want to, eat things that you shouldn't be eating or you want to drink things that you shouldn't be drinking, so to speak, you know, just to feel like a normal human being. Um, but I've just really taken ownership of my supplementation, uh, my workouts and really just, I'm, I think finally scratching the surface and seeing how good I have been competing and how good I've been performing. It gets you more motivated to do, do things even better. You know, I've, I've been competing here at this level and doing everything right to this level, but what can I do to add to that? How much more discipline can I be? Um, what can I add to, to, to just be that much better? And I think supplementing my protein shakes and amino acids every single day after practices, amino acids throughout the day, um, prehab, rehab, rolling out, my body just feels a ton better. And really, I think I'm just maturing. I mean, the amount of muscle mass I have, the lean muscle mass I have, I just did the DEXA scan. And between last camp and this camp, I'm at seven weeks out. Last camp, I was seven point something percent body fat. Um, or no, two weeks out from last camp, I was 7% body fat. At seven weeks out, this camp, I was 7% body fat. So I've dropped 3% body fat, um, 2 or 3% body fat to where I am now. So my, my body fat is going down and my lean muscle mass is staying where it is and it looks bigger, it looks more explosive, and it looks better just because I have less fat and I'm holding the lean muscle mass because of the amino acids and the protein shakes and just taking care of my body, realizing that I'm, you know, I'm married and I, I'm accountable for my wife, going to have kids hopefully in the next year or so. I'm accountable for them and their future. So, you know, I've been taking it seriously for almost a decade now, but I want to take it even more seriously. So I got I to gotta ask you, um, there, the, the way this, this event is set up, um, it's all supposed to be Bell Tour 180, but part of it's pay-per-view, part of it's just on – on, uh, um, uh, on Spike. Yep. Obviously, Pico and Zach Freeman open up the open up the pay per view card. Um, Pico's first fight, never fought and never made before, but he's opening up a pay per view card on a main event. All the years you put in, all the time you put in, also have a wrestling background. Obviously, Pico's got the better wrestling background out of the three of us, and it's just how it goes. Um, does that give you a little bit of what the what the hell, man? Like. You know that that's we put a lot. A lot of guys put a lot of time in, and this guy, you know, oh and oh and oh, is walking in, and all of a sudden he's he's like he's he's starting. A, you know, he's he's already on the main card. He's already he's already on a main event. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I say I I have a ton of respect for him. You know, yeah. I have a ton of respect for Aaron Pico. Oh, uh, I'm not I'm not saying that he's not going to live up to the bill. I'm not saying that we don't like him. I love that kid. Like I love his attitude. I've talked to him a couple times behind the stage uh, with Zenk and his manager and him. Great, Aaron is an amazing human being, is an amazing individual. But even me being out of the sport is kind of like, hold on, man. There's a lot of fighters that put some time in. He hasn't even yeah. he hasn't done anything but in another sport, and we're giving him a main event status. It, to me, it was a little bit like, whoa, hold on. Yeah, well, and what I was going to say is I have a ton of respect for him, but I don't think that the route that the route that he went, the route that I went, proves that I proved that I was tough. The route that he went, I mean, 
He didn't wrestle in college. College, The college wrestling environment breaks people. The college wrestling environment has a way of taking you and taking these top, top, top level people and crumbling them and kicking them to the curb. He didn't have to go through that. So I have a ton of respect for his wrestling ability. If we, if we threw on singlets and wrestled, he might beat me, you know, who knows? But, um, I think he, yes, he has this wrestling background, but he didn't go through that college wrestling environment. What we, we don't know if he would have been an all American just because he did a little bit at the, in the freestyle circuit doesn't mean he would have been an all American. doesn't mean he would have been a national champion, you know? Um, so ton of respect for him. It's not really, you know, he didn't ask to be on the pay-per-view card. Bellator's putting him there. Bellator's trying to build him. Bellator's trying to, trying to, you know, th- these promotions have a way of portraying somebody the way that the promotion wants them to be portrayed. Conor McGregor has proved himself, to, has proved to everybody who he is, and, and he is he is he's a darn good lightweight. He's a darn good fighter. And um, but in the very beginning, the promotion built him, and the promotion said, "Hey, this is what he is," and told us what we what we needed to believe about these people. And that's what Bellator is doing. They are feeding everybody, feeding Aaron Pico to everybody, saying this kid's the next big thing. And we'll find out, you know, I mean, either way, to me, it doesn't matter, man. I tell you what, I've, I've been in this sport long enough and I've been ticked off enough times and I've been extremely taken care of enough times to realize that this is just the way the sport is. And it's, and it's, uh, it's the entertainment business and I'm focused on one person and that is myself in this sport. I'm focused on myself and how I can make, make it to where I need to be so I can put food on the table for my wife and future kids. And that's really all that matters to me. And uh, I'm just excited to be on this card, and you know we'll see if he lives up to the hype. I know I'm going to go in and steal the show. He's not going to be he's not going to be able to perform at the level at which I am. So that gets me excited, and I'm just going to steal the whole show June 24th. Right, I got to ask you too. I know a set of wrestlers, Phil Davis and Ryan Bader, who are the the, the basic, basically the main event of the Spike TV portion. And I talked to Ryan, and he's like, "This is way better for me." Because I'm going to make a lot more money um, because I have eyeballs and I got tickets, viewership of people being under. There's no, there's no pay per view deal. You know, obviously this is this is Bellator's first pay per view deal. Who do you think wins that fight between Davis and Bader? Man, that's tough. Honestly, the the funny thing is, and I've had I've had this question about 25 times, and I can never remember who won the first fight. Who won the first fight? Bader, but it was so close, you know. And it was one of those, and it's kind of one of those funny situations too, because honestly, I'm friends with both of them. At, at the time, I was a training at Alliance, so I was friends with Phil, but I've been friends with Bader for just as long because we're with the same management company. So I was kind of torn in between. So you like both guys, so you really don't care who wins, you know, kind of situation. So in my mind, I can never remember who won. I do remember it wasn't that great of a fight. There wasn't a ton going on. It was very close in a not so good way. You know, neither of them did a ton. So. You know, I think we're going to see a lot of the same. You know, you've seen, you know, you've seen Bader. Bader went on his run in the UFC. He should have should have been next in line for the title, um, but then he lost. And then, uh, you know, you've seen Phil come in, win the title. You've seen Phil get a couple knockouts and great performances, look phenomenal in Bellator. I think you're going to see a rejuvenated Ryan Bader who's pumped up about uh, getting a lot of viewers, getting his sponsorships back, getting all that kind of stuff, wanting to come in and prove himself. So, I think this fight has been set up for a way better performance for both guys to be quite honest um and really this is one of those things it's just a toss-up i mean i i literally you know it sounds cliche to say i don't know it's it's any man's fight but really i i don't have an opinion because i really don't think i, I think they're about as evenly matched as you can be so it's going to be a good fight i think the first time they fought was back in june of or excuse me january of 2015 so okay. over two and a half years ago split decision win uh uh for for ryan and it was, you literally could have argued, you could have put me in the middle of the room and go, okay, right now you have to argue Ryan. I can argue it. Okay, now you have to argue, argue Phil. I can argue it. Like, there was, there was so much of, there was, there was so little of difference between the beach room during the fight that it literally should, could have been a split decision draw. Like, no problem. I'm, okay, I'm good with that, too. It was, it was um, there, were, there were parts of it that were super exciting, and then parts yep. of it where you're like, okay, this is just stupid. Like, why are you even out here? And the only the only thing I can say, the difference is, Ryan likes to punch and doesn't mind getting hit. Phil likes to punch but hates getting hit. That's the only difference. So the question yeah. is, can Phil draw Ryan in to where he's like, I don't want to be hit, I don't want to be hit, and takes him down and then right and beats him up on top, 
Or can Ryan get inside like, oh, he doesn't like to get hit. Let me get in here and smack him up so he can't shoot on me. That's the, that's the game for these two. And it is yeah. well worthy of being a main event on, on Spike TV. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be, it's yeah. going to be one of those fights where you're like, a lot of action going on, but for the goats like you and I that know what's happening, we're like, eh, eh, there's yeah. not, nothing's yeah. happening. So. Yeah, it's two big names, and, and, it's, and it's happening at a good time. They're both rejuvenated. And uh, so it would be a good it's, it, that June 24th is, is a, a good, nice, big card, whether it's on 180 or it's the, or it's the Bells or NYC pay per view. It's, it's a good night of fights top to bottom. I like it. Mike, thanks so much for coming on here. I appreciate it, especially on your. You'd like to be sitting around watching some movies instead of talking to me, so I appreciate that. <laughs> you got it, man. Well, I, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. And uh, see you guys on June 24th. Yep. Take care, man. Have a great, great last week, and we'll talk soon. Yes, sir. Bye.